Hey fellow photographer, how's it going? I'm Michael Zell. This is the third video in our little series about shooting spicy holiday photos. Today it's particularly about shooting with big gear like a big DSLR and big light modifiers. Emily and I, we are still in Club Spice on Lanzarote over here on the Canary Islands. With that said, let's dive right into the tips. Tip number one of my six tips for today is actually about lighting. It's about using a TTL speed light and a soft box. Your DSLR camera is an incredibly smart and precise instrument. So it makes good sense to pair it with lighting gear that is actually also smart and precise. So the speed light I'm using today is TTL capable and high speed sync capable. That means it's very smart and the modifier that I'm using is a softbox, which is pretty precise when it comes to controlling light. And all of that is still lightweight, but it gives you really awesome results. The lighting kit that I'm using today is completely from Photix because their gear totally rocks. So let's start with the light stand. I'm using again the Photix P200 MK2 compact light stand, which is just one kilogram weight but it extends up to two meters and it's pretty sturdy. The umbrella swivel that I attach on top is again the Photix Varos 2 BG. And now I'm adding an additional element, a boom. It's a multi-boom 16 inch flash bracket. This boom, it's the ideal holder for my modifier, which is an umbrella softbox. It's the Photix 60 by 90 easy up softbox. The speed light inside is the Mitros Plus. It's TTL capable, but most importantly, it's also high speed zoom capable. And we will talk about what that means. I'm controlling the speed light from my camera using my Odin controller. The camera for today will be my beloved Canon 5D Mark III. I think it's the ideal portrait and beauty camera. If you play around with this kind of speed lights, you will very, very soon realize that you have the magic wand for light right to your disposal. Let's get over to tip number two, which is working with TTL. Our DSLR cameras are incredibly smart instruments. And one thing that is in particular helpful is their TTL mode, metering through the lens, TTL. This accounts for the ambient exposure, which is defined by ISO and f-stop and the shutter speed, and it also counts for the amount of flash that is added to the photo. I suggest set your camera into aperture priority mode. The aperture is something that you want to control and not the camera. In aperture priority mode, the camera tries to keep the ambient and fill in with the flash, which is just awesome. So it's very important, don't set your camera to P or to auto mode or something like that. I switch my remote control, my flash trigger to TTL. It will also switch my flash to TTL and from there on all the rest goes automatic. You can turn the ambient exposure level down by dialing down the exposure correction on your camera, if you like to. I often like to do that. Now you can also turn the amount of flash up, if you like to, by dialing up the flash exposure correction. This is a different correction so you've got different control about your favorite amount of flash and your favorite yeah lightness or darkness of the ambient you set now just dig into the manual of your camera and see what control you have to use to dial this up and down and then start using it creatively so usually i would insist that you learn manual lighting first and once you understand manual lighting then you go to TTL because then it will really start helping you. But since we are on holiday, I will not be that strict. So just go to TTL mode by setting your camera to aperture variation and your flash to TTL and start playing around with it. It's fun and you will have a lot of shots which are perfectly exposed. Tip number three. This is about composition and especially about a layered composition. Why are some photos so much more interesting than other photos? Maybe the scene is the same. Maybe the technical things are all the same, but still those photos are more interesting. Why is that? 
Oftentimes, because a photographer makes use of what is called a layered composition, that means there is something like a foreground layer, which is blurry and which introduces the scene to the viewer. Then there's a middle ground where the action is going on. There's probably the model or like over here an object and that is really sharp. And then there's also a third layer, a background layer that is blurry again, but it's embedding the whole scene into a kind of context. It's just not distracting from the main, from the middle layer, but it's giving additional information. If you find a scene where such a layered composition is going on, or if you artificially set up such a scene, maybe you just hold something in front of your lens, a glass bottle, or if it's outside, some leaves, something which is blurry in the foreground. If you go this extra mile, then expect your photos to become more interesting, more cinematic. So that is a good thing to do. Tip number four, it's about posing, in particular about her shoulder, her chin, and the lean. When you are posing female subjects, they need a little bit more work than male subjects. There's a little bit of a secret sauce and I want you to use that. What I'm talking about is her chin, her shoulder and the lean. That means her chin should be elongated towards your lens and then probably and only then turned a little bit down. What it does is it eliminates double chin. I mean, everybody got double chin. If you're going backwards with your head, then there's double chin, no matter how thin you are. However, if you stretch the chin forward and then go down, all of a sudden everything is gone. So this is a really good trick. You should use it all the time. Then another thing is that the shoulder connected to the chin is very erotic. So use that, let her work her shoulder forwards. And the last thing you should pay attention to is the lean. If you want to thin her body out a little bit, or if you want to make the connection to your lens stronger, then let her upper body lean a little bit towards your lens. And that just makes it a bit stronger. It just takes a little bit away from the hips and the whole expression is probably a little bit more erotic. So chin forward, down, works the shoulder, lean. This is a secret sauce. Keep that in mind, try it out. So let's go to tip number five. Sun backlighting with high speed sync. Shooting a photograph against the bright midday sun can be very spectacular, very powerful. But how do we bring down the amount of light that comes into the camera to a manageable state so that our flash can compete? Should we use ND filters, neutral density filters again, like in the last video? No. This time we're gonna use high speed sync because our big DSLR and the flash system offers high-speed sync. That means we can synchronize our little flashes to a faster shutter speed. For example, a shutter speed of a one thousandth of a second, like I used it in this example. A one thousandth of a second brings down the sun so that the light is still manageable. At the same time, I can use the flash. Now, ironically, high-speed sync makes the flash working so slow that the camera, even at a fast speed, can pick up some of the flashlight. So it will not use all of the flashlight. Some light will be wasted, but at least there's enough light to make my subject popping out. So if you try out high speed sync and you shoot directly against the sun, expect your photos to be quite spectacular and quite powerful. In order to use high speed sync, your camera, the flash and the radio control, they all have to support high speed sync. Usually that's no problem. Canon, Nikon and all the better flash systems, they support high speed sync. You just switch your flash system to high speed sync, you dial a shorter shutter speed on your camera, for example, a thousandth of a second, and then you're good to go. Tip number six, color correction for tungsten lighting. It's getting dark right now and the lights go on. Typically lights inside are tungsten colored. That means they've got a warm orangish light. Our flashes on the other hand, they have got a daylight color. This is very bluish. If you put both together, if you put such a blue flash onto a person inside a room in tungsten lighting, then this person typically got this blue ghost-like skin. How do we correct that? We attach a little orange gale in front of our flash. This orange gale is called color temperature orange gale, or short CTO gale. 
you just buy a big piece of CTO gear on, let's say eBay, you cut out a piece that just fits onto your flash head and you attach it there with scotch tape, for example. When you don't need the color temperature orange gel anymore, when it's daylight again outside and you go outdoor with your flash, just get it on. With the CTO gel in front of your flash, you dial the white balance of your camera to tungsten because now your flash has got tungsten light color. With your CTO gear, you can photograph people in a tungsten environment. They've got a perfect skin tone. They will like the photos. If you don't use a tungsten gear and the people have a bluish skin tone, typically they will not like it. I've got one little additional photo idea for you. And this is flash painting. We'll go right now into the dance club because over there it's really, really dark. And what I can do over there is I can position my model on a white bed or on a white blanket or against a white wall. Then I put my camera onto a tripod so that the camera is really stable. I open the shutter for 10 seconds, which is really, really long. And during this 10 seconds, I will fire a couple of flashes from a handheld speed light at various positions of my model. Maybe like four different flashes. One of the flashes going straight into her face so that I've got a really nice face exposure and the other flashes just go at various parts of her body. What this gives me is a very unique exposure, very interesting exposure, without the need of a lot of gear and uh, a complicated lighting setup. I just use my speed lights test flash button which fires a flash at 30 seconds of power and this is enough it's just crucial that the model doesn't move between the separate flashes so after i exposed i directly check the result i check is it sharp is it not blurry because the model moved or the camera shaked or whatever and i check whether or not i did hit her at pleasant spots because every exposure will be different. I think this is a lot of fun. This is fast, this is unique. So I suggest just try it out. Thank you so much for taking the time and watching this video. And I really hope these tips are useful for you. If you like the video, like always, please give us a thumbs up. Please click on like, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our magazine at goodlightmag.com. I hope to see you in the next video and until then, I wish you good light.